Despite its age, the iPod Classic is a fantastic music player with a recognizable robust build sporting the nostalgic Liquid interface. What makes the iPod Classic great is that still in the end of the year 23 it can be repaired and upgraded, for example by swapping its hard drive for SD storage with SD adapters or by upgrading to a higher capacity battery. These modifications will increase its functionality and lifespan. However, the iPod Classic still has some drawbacks. Playing certain formats, for example FLAC, and it still depends in its software on Apple, in macOS support, and reliance on iTunes and Windows. If you ever wanted to break free from these limitations, then you should consider installing an open source software called Rockbox, something that we will do in this video. Hello guys. In this video I want to talk to you about possible ways how you can enhance your iPod experience. Perhaps you have upgraded your iPod with an SD storage, expanded its battery, maybe tinkered with a Bluetooth adapter and you want to take it a little bit further. Or maybe you just don't like the iTunes experience or macOS experience of how you sync your music, your playlist uh, with your iPod. And in that case you're in luck because there is an amazing open source software called Rockbox that has a ton of features, customization with themes, and you can install it on many, many devices. Obviously, we're talking iPod Classic here, but you can even try and install it on iPod Nano. I wouldn't recommend it because I think iPod Nano, iPod Shuffle, and iPod Touch are um, obsolete electronics because you cannot upgrade them as easy as you can upgrade iPod Classic. So if you have one, great, and I would really recommend you use it and hold it because it's nice to use old electronics. But just be aware that if you want to buy an iPod, uh, maybe not buy iPod Nano, but just invest in a nice iPod Classic, repair it, upgrade it, mod it, and uh, be happy with it. So if you don't have an iPod, I would recommend buying either 5th, 6th or 7th gen. Those are you see on the screen in front of you. Uh, those are the easiest one to upgrade and have the biggest selection of modifications. The 5th gen on the left here is also the easiest one to open. And then uh, the 6th gen you probably remember from my earlier video where I upgraded the back plate, uh, the front plate and installed the SD storage and uh, new battery inside. And I have my 7th gen on the uh, right here which um, is still in pristine condition, which I really like. Apart from that, all of them are mostly the same. So the fifth generation iPod is made from plastic and it's the easiest one to open. Um, let me unlock it for you. It also has a very nice flat interface, which I like the most out of the latest, that is fifth, sixth and seventh generation of uh, iPod. It has this nice classic, um, I would say Mac OS Tiger, interface, um, which is easy to read, easy to navigate, and it also has the artwork with no frills. So it's beautiful, nice, flat, easy to read, easy to navigate, and just great to um, use every day. Now to compare it with the 7th generation, and 7th and 6th generation have the same operating system, 7th generation have a, a little bit updated interface. So you can see there is a cover flow on the right. This is kind of a slideshow of all the album's artwork that you have, which will slowly change um, if you gaze at the at the main screen. It also has the Genius Mixes, which were the attempt of Apple to suggest music to you. It was basically a playlist which were populated on the iTunes every time you would sync your iPod. Another notable feature of the 7th and 6th gen is the cover flow. And that's basically this flow of the album artwork that you can browse through as if it's um, uh, vinyl record uh, covers. And the fifth gen doesn't have that. However, the fifth gen, I think it's much more easier to navigate and cover flow, in my opinion, is just a gimmick. I never used it. Uh, I don't think it's supposed to be on the iPod because it's, well, it's just uh, something extra that Apple decided to put in. And final difference is in the way how the uh, play um, looks like, the play screen. As you can see, the 5th gen has a very flat view and the 7th gen has this 3D kind of look with shadow and a little bit of reflection. Um, I prefer the 5th gen again, but 
um, whatever iPod you choose. If you choose 5th, 6th or 7th gen, they all will work uh, fine. It has a lot of uh, replacement parts, as I just said, and Rockbox can be installed on all of them. So before we jump into installing the Rockbox, let me just outline most important stuff, in my opinion, why you want to install it on the iPod. First of all, you get access to way more formats that you could play. You can play FLAC, WAF, AUG, all the other formats that you can find on the website. So that's a great thing for people who are always frustrated that iTunes or um, uh, Apple Music would transform their uh, files into the Apple format or that they had to stick with a specific ALEC uh, lossless format and not FLAC. Then you have theme support. So if you ever wanted to customize the way how the iPod looks, this is the thing. There are tons of themes that are all available. Finally, you have apps. They are mostly games. You get full equalizer and you get dynamic playlist. So dynamic playlist allows you to just create playlist on the fly on the iPod without syncing it first with iTunes or Apple Music. Finally, the most important feature for me is the fact that you can just drag and drop files on the iPod and they will be available for uh, playthrough. Well, let's try and install Rockbox now. To install Rockbox, you obviously want to head to the official website and there you can find the installer as well as all the supported devices. Uh, it doesn't have the installer for 7th gen, but 6th gen and 7th gen of iPod are basically the same devices, so we will use the 6th gen manual. I would definitely recommend you to read the manual. It's very useful. It also tells you about all the problems that might give you that you might encounter and how to circumvent them. Now, before we go and just download and start the installer, there are a couple of things that we need to do. First of all, you need to download iTunes and I'm using Windows here. So I'm going to download iTunes for Windows. Uh, go to Apple uh, website for it. Don't download the one from the Microsoft Store. Just download the one from the Apple website and install this version of the iTunes. Once uh, iTunes is installed, there are a couple of things that you need to do. So in my case, I first need to restore my iPod because I had it formatted under macOS. Um, and I'm going to install Rockbox on uh, Windows. So I'm going to restore the iPod um, so that it's ready to be used with Windows. And once it's done, there are a couple of important things to do. First of all, the open iTunes when iPod is connected needs to be disabled, and then the enable disk usage should be enabled there, just like on the picture on the screen. So now we are ready to uh, download the Rockbox installer and you download it for your particular device um, and then you start it and hopefully it will finish for you um, successfully. For me it didn't so for me there were a couple of issues and I will um, first explain uh, the issues to you and in the end I will tell you um, how to sort of bulletproof install it on your uh, on your iPod. But let's go over the um, installation process first. So uh, basically Rockbox needs to install the bootloader and then some additional things um, for the iPod. That is the actual um, Rockbox firmware, um, fonts, themes, plugins, um, and so on. And if you want to install um, a lot of themes, now is the time. You always can install them later. You can just drop them in the themes folder, but better to uh, install them um, through the installer of the Rockbox itself. So for demo purposes, I will install the i uh, iClassic theme, which uh, is either in the style of the 5th gen iPod or the 7th gen iPod. And I will also install um, four themes that resemble an imaginary iOS-like um, iPod interface. So where did the problem start? I tried to follow just the normal installation procedure of the installer, but then at this point that is now on the screen, when I was asked to press select plus menu together for 12 seconds and wait, it just rebooted in the normal iPod um, interface. So then what I did, I did a lot of Googling, I did a lot of um, trying out, and finally I managed to install it. So right now I'll put on the screen the bulletproof uh, instruction that worked for me. So it's very simple. You need to unplug your iPod, put it in the disk mode, 
then in, plug it in and install from the Rockbox installer everything but the bootloader. After that, you install the bootloader. And at, at some point, it will ask you to press menu plus select for 12 seconds. You press it until you see another message on your screen, on the Rockbox installer screen. And after that, the installation should finish and your iPod should boot in the Rockbox. So now let me demo it in this video. So that's how you put it in the disk mode. As I said, you press menu and select and after it turns off, you press play and select. And now it should, you wait, of course, and now it will turn into the disk mode. And in the top, you will see it's written there, um, disk mode. Here we go. After that, you plug it in and in the Rockbox installer, as I said, you install everything but the bootloader. And once it's done, the only thing is left is um, the bootloader itself. And on that moment that is now on the screen, you need to press select press menu for a very long time until you see the message on the screen. And here is the message. So um, right now, you can release the button so you do not do, you don't need to press anything you just wait until the rockbox installer um, is finished and here we go so here is boot, boots up rockbox has booted up uh, it is connected to the computer so you can for example drag and drop some music on it um, but let's unplug it and see um, how it looks. All right, well, now we have our Rockbox installed and that's the basic menu. So you have your files and there you can open any file that is saved on the iPod. You have the database where it catalogs your music, uh, resume playback, settings with all the, well, settings that you want to configure uh, on the iPod. You also have recordings, and for that you need a microphone um, on your headphone jack or a dock uh, that supports the microphone, then you can record the music um, or voice. You have your playlist catalog, plugins with a lot of games there, um, and system settings. So let's try to play some music. We can go through database, or we can just go to the any file that we put on the iPod and uh, open it directly. So let's just try to open some uh, Travis uh, song. And this is it. This is the default um, Rockbox interface. So the controls are very similar, although the controls on Rockbox are slightly different than the stock iPod. So please refer to the instructions on the Rockbox website for any questions. And there is a slight difference if you saw it. So if you lock your iPod, it uh, dims the screen uh, so that's kind of the the nice feature there. You lock it, it dims the screen you can put in your pocket. Another cool feature that Rockbox has is full equalizer. So you can configure your volume, your maximum volume limit, your bass, your treble, um, anything basically that you want to enhance your audio experience, it's here. Okay, now let's go check out some themes that we installed. So I have installed five themes. It's iPod Classic, a take on the iPod um, uh, fifth generation, and also a take on the iOS kind of inspired refresh one. So then we press it. It takes a little bit to load. And here we go. So it kind of looks a little bit like um, iPod seventh gen, um, maybe mixed with fifth gen interface. Uh, the fonts are a little bit off, which is noticeable, but, well, it can pass um, for a person who is not familiar with the iPod very closely. And then if you um, try to play it, well, it looks uh, quite similar. Still some uh, finicky things with the fonts there. Let's try the iOS one. This one I like the most 
it has this fusion kind of look and when you, when you play a song it looks really pretty so if you ever want to show off in public and show how different your iPod looks and how the different uh, the playback uh, function looks this is the theme you want to install finally you can install a lot of games on the iPod with Rockbox as well so let's try and open up some Doom and for the rest I'm not gonna demo them here you can probably check them on the website of Rockbox itself or check uh, some other YouTube videos um, but here's some Doom gameplay it's a nice gimmick the controls are very hard um, you basically need to play only with your quick will um, there are different functions that you can also check online as I said nice gimmick but nothing very spectacular here now as a final piece um, what if you want to still boot your normal iPod operating system well for that you restart the iPod and when the screen goes dark you turn off the lock button the lock switch and if you do that accurately then it will boot back into the normal iPod operating system iPod firmware and finally it boots so here it is your normal stock iPod operating system you don't see any of the music here so music that you put on Rockbox uh, will not be visible in iPod uh, firmware and vice versa so be aware of that and if you want to boot back into the Rockbox then you just restart and don't touch the lock switch and it will go back into the Rockbox firmware so there you have it I hope you liked this video and it sparked your interest to try out Rockbox on your iPod and if you want to know spoiler alert my honest opinion whether I would switch to it fully or not then watch till the end of this video thank you very much and I'll see you in the next one hey guys so now final part it's my personal opinion why for me the stock iPod is still the best experience as long as the Apple support it and I can use iTunes and Apple music and finder support in Mac OS to uh, put my music on it Rockbox is great in terms of customizability you can do so much more things with it you can install all those plugins and games and play Quake and Duke Nukem 3D and Snake and whatnot uh, and this is fantastic you can also install all those different themes and make it look like a completely different device with customizable buttons with uh, customizable widgets with um, additional clock timers um, all kind of things and that's great so from this point of view it's like Linux you can make it very pretty you can tune it to your own liking to your own needs um, it's a fantastic constructor like firmware to create your let's say uh, best possible experience on your iPod and don't get me started on just drag and dropping your files onto the iPod and then playing them this is fantastic however if your goal is to listen to music primarily and let's say you don't really care that much whether you're listening to FLAC or ALAC or AAC the stock iPod OS works just fine it is I think the best in terms of usability way to use an iPod because well I think because it was created by Apple themselves it works perfectly with a quick will the controls are intuitive and it provides best possible experience uh, in terms of managing music as well that is in relation to iTunes and um, Apple music or finder and in contrast to this the way how Rockbox manages your music is very cumbersome and somewhat slow so for example there is a concept of dynamic playlist when you play a song on the Rockbox on the iPod you create a dynamic playlist and if you want to let's say create a new dynamic playlist and add music one by one um, then you get this menu um, item that you see on the screen you can do it with a dynamic playlist dynamic playlist is basically the now playing one you can also create your own playlists on the iPod itself but the interface the interface is super cumbersome so um, let me show it to you so let's say you want to create a playlist you um, long press on this song and then you need to go to playlist catalog 
and create a new playlist. And then you click on add new playlist and then you get this and it's not such a big deal. You can name your playlist with this interface and then with this interface you can create a, a bunch of playlists in the same manner here and then you can save them. Um, but the problem is that with a normal iTunes or with a normal Apple Music, you just have it seamlessly on your desktop PC or a Mac and then it's straightforwardly synced to your iPod and you don't need to bother with it. You of course can um, edit this playlists on your PC. Uh, you can just open the file and edit them with mouse or button um, or you can install some additional software to help you manage those um, uh, playlists. For example, Media Monkey or Music Bee. That's another uh, good one. But until Apple stops supporting iPods, I think I would just stick with a proven iTunes or Apple Music and just have a normal seamless experience as I would have expected on the iPod. But that's my take. Maybe uh, some of you tried Rockbox and found it much more usable, much more customizable and just a better option. And so I'm looking forward to hearing your opinion, um, your experience of using it. And in the end, I hope you like this video and I wish to see you in the next one.